in Lausanne in Switzerland. This is the Olympic capital, but this is Switzerland, of course, which makes it the watch capital of the world. We are on our way to Geneva, which is right across the lake over there. The lake is called Le Mans, but right across the lake on the other side is Evian, where uh, the bottle maker is. That's France, and there is an imaginary line which divides Switzerland from France. We are on our way to Geneva to visit the manufacturing unit of Piaget. On my way to Geneva, I learned that the Swiss watch industry has always had a structure where suppliers, craftsmen and subcontractors supply movements and external parts to assemblers who put the final product together. But to a smaller extent now, the industry has a vertically integrated structure where watches are sometimes made almost entirely by the same company in the small city of Geneva. Here you'll find a lot of these manufacturing units clustered in one area. Piaget is one of them. Here's where I meet Matthäus von Stratton, the company's development director. Now this watch, Piaget's Alti Plano 43, holds two records against its name. One is the fact it's got the thinnest movement. It's 2.35 millimeters and also it holds the record for being the thinnest watch in the world, 5.25 millimeters. Now how does Piaget make watches like this? I'm here in Switzerland, in Geneva, to find out just that. Piaget was founded in 1874 as a manufacturer of watch movements. The Piaget family began to produce and sell mechanical watches only in 1911 by bringing various subcontractors and craftsmen under one roof. It all starts with a good idea and a good idea can look like this here at Piaget. It comes in the form of a picture, something that you're seeing over here. Now this will be a two-dimensional uh, picture, but that will be turned into a three-dimensional one like Matthias was showing me just a while ago, where you will design this watch, uh, keeping that picture in mind and obviously these components will be designed. And once that is done, you will hit a print button, a print button on a machine that will create a wax replica. This will be again taken back to the marketing people to see whether this works in their scheme of things. In case it doesn't, then it goes back to the design team and then back again over here. Once the marketing people are okay with this, then you design the components. And these components, the design of it can look pretty complicated like rocket science as it does to me right now. But after all of this is through, it is taken to the industrialization people to be able to discuss how this is going to be entirely ready for manufacture. For luxury watches, gold is one of the main metals for crowns, bezels, buckles, screws and gaskets. Clearly, a company like Piaget needs a lot of it. How much of gold would exist at any given point in time? More or less one ton of gold. One ton of gold exactly. is what we are looking at and I'm holding on to a bar of it. Once all that gold is procured, it goes to subcontractors to have it turned into alloys and returned in the basic shape of a dial, ready for the milling process. In milling, these specially designed machines carve out the dial to fit the basic design of the watch in a way that it's ready for polishing and satin finishing. So what exactly happens over here now? What happens over here is the casing of, of the watch is where we put the, the movement, the dial and the hands inside of the case of the watch. So what kind of precision does it take uh, in the assembling process to be able to put together a watch uh, that is of course uh, so iconic? It takes, it takes really a lot of precision because this is where all the constraints are in terms of, of uh, precision of the watch. The hands have to be fit very precisely so that they can fly one on top over the other, not touch the dial, not touch, touch the, the sapphire glass. It has to be assembled by people who have a lot of know-how and skill in their hands. But no matter what Swiss watch brand we speak of, it's the association with the phrase Swiss made that makes the watch that much more of a prized possession. Indeed, a watch is considered Swiss by law when the movement is Swiss, the movement is encased in Switzerland and where the final inspection by the manufacturer is in Switzerland. 
But can legal protection alone take the Swiss watchmaking industry to the next level of growth? Well, first of all, it will, will be the markets who are going to drive the Swiss, Swiss industry and the demand of the customers, which is particularly located in Asia today, especially for Piaget, where we have two-thirds of our customers being, being in Asia. Piaget has found 60% of its sales in Asia, primarily in China, with 13 boutiques there. But why just Piaget? For over four centuries now, tradition, craftsmanship, technology and innovation have kept the Swiss watchmaking industry ahead in the world watch market. And that brings us to the end of this fascinating journey into the world of the global watch industry. The feeling is very positive, no matter the kind of volatility that the various markets in the world are facing. And it is uh, great that we are ending this journey here in Geneva and Switzerland, right in front of the iconic jet d'eau, which simply means fountain of water. You see the string of watch brands of the world right before this iconic fountain. Thanks so much for joining us on this journey. I'm Vikramoza. Bye-bye.